So what is morphology? Morphology examines how words are formed in any particular language. It focuses especially on their internal structure and how their meaning can be altered through the addition of prefixes and suffixes. What is prefixes and suffixes then? Prefixes are the word part added before the root word and suffixes are the word part added after the root word. A morpheme is the smallest element in the language capable of creating distinction in the meaning. As such, it is central to an understanding of morphology. Let me proceed to syntax. Syntax refers to the rules that govern how words combine to create meaningful utterances. Morphemes combine to form words, and words combine into phrases, and phrases combine according to set rules into classes. Now, in the spoken language, there is additional concern with the ways in which sound is connected to meaning. This, therefore, introduces the third category, which is phonology. Let's revisit the golden rule. It says, Subjects and verbs must agree with one another in number, singular or plural. Thus, if the subject is singular, its verb must also be singular. And if a subject is plural, its verb must also be plural. Let us go through some of the subject-verb agreement rules. Number one, if the subject is singular, the verb must be singular too. Look at examples. He walks every day. He is the subject and it is singular, thus it needs a singular verb, which is walks. Look at example number two. Mario, Mario eats ice cream. Mario is singular, thus it needs singular verb, which is eats. Then we have rule number two. If the subject is plural, the verb must be also plural. Example, they walk every day. They is plural and walk is also plural. Another, the wolves hunt for food. Wolves is now the subject which is plural and our verb is hunt which is plural. When the subject of the sentence is composed of two or more nouns or pronouns connected by and, always use a plural verb. Example, the SHS student and the teachers write every day. Since it is composed of two or more nouns, which is as SHS student and teacher, thus it takes a plural verb, which is write. Then we have the fourth. When there is one subject and more than one verb, the verbs throughout the sentence must agree with the subject. Say, for example, interviews are one way to collect data and permit researchers to gain an in-depth understanding of the participants. In the given example, our subject is interviews, which is plural. Thus, it takes a plural verb, are and permit. Then we have Rule number five, when the phrase comes between the subject and the verb, remember that the verb still agrees with the subject, not the noun or pronoun in the phrase following the subject of the sentence. Look at the example. The learner, as well as the teacher, is excited. Why in a sentence we use is, where in fact there is teachers before it. Because our main subject is the learner, not the teacher. It is just a phrase that comes between the subject and the verb. Therefore, we will be focusing on its subject, which is learner. And that is singular, therefore it takes a singular verb, which is S. Another example. The focus of the interviews was nine purposely selected participants. In the given example, our subject is focus and it is singular. So, it takes a singular verb, which is 
was. Get me? The sixth rule. When two or more singular nouns or pronouns are connected by or or nor, use always a singular verb. Take for example, the chairperson or the CEO approves the proposal before proceeding. So to give an example, our verb, our noun rather, is the chairperson or the CEO with the use of or. Even if there are two nouns there stated, because of the use of or, we will still use a singular form of verb, which is approves. Then we have the seventh. When a compound subject contains both singular and a plural noun or pronoun joined by or or nor, the verb should agree with the part of the subject that is closest to the verb. Take note closest to the verb. This is also called the rule of proximity. Look at example. The student or the committee members write every day. So, even if there is, a, even if the subjects are uh, joined by or, since we are going to follow or we're going to follow on the closest subject to the verb which is members and members is plural therefore it takes a plural verb which is right another example the committee members or the student writes every day. Remember that the rule says that even if you are even if the noun or the plural noun is joined by or or nor, the verb should always agree with the part of the subject that is closest to the verb. Now, in the given example, the closest a noun to the verb writes is student. And student is singular, therefore it takes a singular verb which is writes. Then we have the eighth one. The words and phrases with the use of each, each one, either, neither, everyone, everybody, anyone, anybody, nobody, somebody, someone and no one are singular and require a singular verb. Look at an example. Each of the participants was willing to be recorded. So as you have observed in a given example, with the use of each of the participants, even if there is S in the noun participants, we will stick to the rule that says that with the use of those words and phrases like each and etc., it should follow a singular verb. Therefore, we'll use was, willing to be recorded. Neither. Neither alternative hypothesis was accepted. So, with the use of neither, it is always singular. Therefore, we'll use a singular verb, which is was. Then we have the ninth. Uncountable nouns always take a singular verb. Take, for example, education is the key to success. Education is singular, therefore it takes singular verb. And education is uncountable now. So we cannot count education, right? Another, diabetes affects many people around the world. And diabetes is singular and it's uncountable. We cannot count it. Therefore, it takes a singular verb, which is affects. Another one. The information obtained from the company was relevant to include in the study. So the information is uncountable noun. We cannot count the information. Therefore, it takes a singular verb, which is was. And the last example. The research I obtained on the topic was inadequate. The subject is the research and still uncountable noun. Therefore, it takes a su singular subject. A singular verb, rather, which is was. And we have the tenth rule. Some 
countable nouns in English such as earnings, goods, odds, surroundings, process, contents, and valuables only have a plural form and take a plural verb. Look at the example. The earnings for this day surpass expectations. So with the noun, the earnings, it is countable. We can count how much we earn for the day. Therefore, it takes a plural verb, which is surpass. Another, the proceeds from the caravan go to the support of the homeless population in the city. The proceeds is countable. Therefore, it takes a plural verb, which is go. And the next one, locally produced goods have the benefits for shorter supply chain. Locally produced goods, that is countable. The goods can be counted. So we, we will use have as a plural verb in a sense. We have the 11th. And a sentence beginning with the there is or there are, the subject follows the verb. Since there is not the subject, the verb agrees with what follows the verb. Look at example. There is little administrative support. So there is not a subject. Uh, always remember that one. The subject bear or the noun is the word administrative support. And it is singular. Therefore, it takes a singular verb, which is S. Another example. There are many factors affecting teacher retention. Factors. The noun is factors. Therefore, it takes a plural verb, which is are. Do you understand? Did you understand? Of course, I know. Then we have the last one. Collective nouns are words that imply more than one person but are considered singular and take a singular verb. Some examples are group, team, committee, family, and class. An example, the group meets every week. So the group is singular, therefore it takes a singular verb, which is meets. Another example, the committee agrees on equality of writing. The Noun is the committee, and it should take a singular verb, which is agree. However, the plural verb is used if the focus is on the individuals in the group. This is much less common. Look at the example. The committee participate on various volunteer activities in their private lives. The word there, committee, refers to the individual member of the committee. Therefore, it takes a plural verb. So, those are some of uh, the different subject verb agreements that uh, we should always remember as we are going to form sentences. Remember that grammar is everything when you're going to converse with other people. Phonology examines other surface features of speech, such as intonation, stress, and pausing. Then we have use. Use is a typically thought of as having two aspects. The function. Some examples include transmitting ideas, sharing information, passing messages, telling stories to make someone laugh, Coming down an anxious person, expressing love. What is context? Context refers to how people both understand and choose from among alternative linguistic forms in order to reach the same or different goals according to Harris in 2008. Take for example, if you want someone to close the door, perhaps because there is a drought and I'm getting cold, I could say any of the following. Shut the door. Would you mind shutting the door, please? Are you going to shut the door? Were you born in a field? Now, 
Each may serve the purpose of getting the door closed, but they clearly carry different interactional meanings. How do they respond to, may be influenced by such things as the social status of the participants, the degree of intimacy between them, shared knowledge, and so on. What is this pragmatics, by the way? Pragmatics is the study of the use of language in In such situation, we also differ our style. We also shift our style of conversation depending on the degree of formality. Let's try to consider the following utterances. Hoy as astuti. Would you pass the sandwiches? What do you think of the two is more formal? Is it number one or number two? The two utterances are quite distinct in terms of their grammar, vocabulary, and even pronunciation. The first is in the language. For those of you who are unfamiliar with Cordy, and even I am not so more familiar with it, if it is a fairly common feature that the more standardized language tends to be spoken in a formal setting. What is the relevance of style shifting? So what is language form? Language form refers to the formality or the informality of the language use and it Talking with a lawyer, a doctor, or even with your teacher often creates formal ambience in a communication. And from a language, intimate style, the speaker talks to family members, best friends, or romantic partners. 